Today I brought my brother. He just kind of... Batman Dragon him. from the other YouTube channel that has six less subscribers than he does. Mm -hmm. He's moving on up in the world. He thinks he's a big boy now. Thinks he's going to get as much subscribers as me. If he does, if he gets, if he surpasses me, I'm, I'm waging YouTube war on him. All in. But okay, right, guys. Today we brought to you guys since it's E3 week here in Los Angeles and we're in West Virginia. We decided to bring a little bit of E3 here to our culture. To our That's thing. right. We're gonna be doing our sisters and our moms while talking about these games. No. Yes, sir. But today we're gonna to be doing the top ten games of E3 2017. So no consoles, no game, like we're just talking about straight up games. So go ahead and get right into it. So the first game on the list, this is number 10, is Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle for the Nintendo Switch coming out That's August right. 27th or 22nd. That game was impressive, it really was. Yeah, we got a fir our first glimpse of it at the very beginning of the Ubisoft conference and it was... Something that everybody knew was coming because it's been leaked a hundred million times before. But once we saw it, you know, it was like, what the hell, an RTS game? Like, we're, at, like, XCOM, Turn Fire based, Emblem really version unique, of Mario. I mean, really uniquely done, too. Yeah. Where you can strategize, shoot him, run this way, jump, a, a team jump over back to that guy, shoot him again. Like, yeah. It was just really unique, really cool. Yeah, for me, I think it's cool that, you know, Microsoft, or not Microsoft, but Sony, just, Sony, wow. Nintendo decided to give over the rights to Mario game to Ubisoft to make this Rabbids connection game. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what Nintendo needs for the it's Nintendo two Switch. two very popular games. Rabbids games sell really well. Mario games sell phenomenally. Now, art style similar, too, so it worked out mm -hmm. very well. And I think that, you This know, was probably an excellent move, and I really do see more Rabbid Mario games in the future as well. Oh, yeah, I'd say we'll get But as far as this sure. game goes, I think that this game is going to be good. Yeah, and the good thing is it comes out this year. We don't have to wait a whole two years to get it like most of the games that came out at E3 this year. Number nine, Shadow of Colossus, PS4 exclusive, may be on the Xbox One. There was mm. no actually PS4 exclusivity said because during Sony's conference, worst conference ever, they really didn't even specify dates for some of these games or exclusivity. So Shadow of Colossus may not be on the PS4 only, but I'm assuming it is only because it was a PS2 exclusive to begin with. Yeah. This um, game is a complete redoing of the original Shadow of Colossus for the PS2. Which and people like me already. who actually never played Shadow of Colossus back in the PS2 era. Other than that little demo on that little PlayStation well, yeah, magazine. Yeah, we had a little up. PlayStation magazine thing. Came with a little disc for different demos like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 and all that kind of stuff. But um, I've never got a chance to play this game. And everyone says that this game is such a good game that now that they've fully remastered it with beautiful graphics and everything, I feel like I can finally use this opportunity to buy that game. Because it's hard to buy PS2 games anymore, especially yes. with the backwards compatibility for PlayStation, what little it gives you. Yeah, we have a, a pretty cool store here in uh, Beckley. It's uh, called Computer Wiz. They sell a lot of old games, mm -hmm. which is where I've been picking up a lot of my old PlayStation 1 games. So if you live in the area, I do recommend going there. That's but this game is on our list simply because it gives me, people like me, a chance to play this amazing game at its complete Yeah, I mean, set. and it looked beautiful. Like, visually, that like, mm -hmm. was amazing. All right, coming in at number eight, another Nintendo Switch exclusive game, the Kirby game that they announced for 2018. I am a big Kirby fan. I'm a big Nintendo fan in general. But this Kirby game looks so much fun. It looked like it was going to be a four-player-esque type of game, so you and three other players can just pick up and just start playing this like side-scrolling uh, adventure. Funny, I never even thought of a Cur of Kirby while I was watching that little press conference. I was sitting there thinking, you know, Mario, Zelda. You know, I'm just going through my list of characters. Like, ooh, what games can I possibly see now? Yeah, and um, but then Kirby never registered, and then finally when it showed a standalone Kirby game, I was like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, they have a crap ton of, of Kirby games, and I had played a few for the 3DS, but when I saw the t Nintendo Switch version, and I the reason I got the Nintendo Switch is to play with friends, because uh, I felt like they're the only console that really gets co-op, mm. friendship gameplay the best compared to any other company, and I'm really excited for Kirby to come out. 
Uh, Yoshi too. That's that's probably like you know honorable mention because Yoshi they have Unreal Engine four graphics, pl- planet you know looks like little big planet esque type mm-hmm. style, and it that looks beautiful too. So pretty cool announcements. Sadly, two thousand eighteen. So well, a good little something wait. To look forward to next year. Yeah, it's, it's true. Uh, this next game I was looking really forward to getting. Um, at first, I wasn't. Because I've had a problem. And I'm going to go ahead and say the game. It's Far Cry 5. And at first, I was having a little bit of a problem with the Far Cry games. Mostly because they were all really similar. Uh, I just, like, I started with Far Cry 4. That was literally the first Far Cry game I played. And uh, I beat that game 100%. Platinum Trophy, both all DLC and the game. Loved it to pieces. I went back to play the PS3 version, and I would I loved the story to it, but the repetitiveness is what got me. The whole killing the animals, crafting your weapons, and going from hut to hut, killing all the people, emptying out the huts. I'm like, do I really want to start over again? That's like me beating number four and saying, wow, that's such a good game. I think I'll delete the save, delete the save file and do it again. And that's one of the biggest problems. That's why I haven't played Far Cry Primal yet. Because you have Primal, don't you? I do yeah, you have do. Primal, I but I haven't played it yet because of that. So I'm hoping if I give it enough time and space, that when I go back to play Primal, I'll be like, ooh. Yeah, and Far Cry 5, I think what makes it stand out is that they focus on America instead of like these, you know wilderness places with all these exotic creatures and it looks like we're going to be so drawn into this racism um oh, yeah. it's, it's going to be anti gay uh, you know all this kinds of stuff and it looks like it's going to be a really controversial game and I love the idea of this game I I, I honestly want to kill me some really horrible <clears throat> christian like overly not christian but overly religious douchebags because we all know them and we all hate them at times, and this is like one of those games where you're like, you think I'm a sinner for no reason, so I get to kill you back. It, it, it I mean, it's going to be a horrible game, <laughs> but it's going to be great at the same time. So I'm really excited. for Well, Far Grand Theft Auto Five is, you know, another kind of controversial, and game, so is Mafia so. Three. And I love Mafia yeah. Three. Whenever someone called me the N word, I shot the shit out of them, even though I'm not <laughs> like I'm not black myself. It's just still, it's it's satisfying. I thought you were. But anyway, um, um, number six. No, 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 number six. I'm going to get this last thing out. Oh, okay. My wiener. Let me leave it. Whoa. The last thing I was going to say is um, actually watching the gameplay of Far Cry 5 and seeing the videos a lot more at E3. It sold me. All right, go. Coming in number six, the, the game that was gone last year, Assassin's Creed Origins. We got a complete year off of Assassin's Creed. Technically not really, because they showed the trailer to the movie. Yeah, but it was the first time we had been missing an Assassin's Creed gameplay during Ubisoft's conference. Mm -hmm. And Origins looks beautiful. Running on the Xbox One X, it looks fantastic. I'm excited to be in Egypt before the original Assassin's Creed games, playing as, you know, against the Pharaohs. Literal eagle vision. Eagle vision, literally an eagle. And it looks... just defines the graphics... Of the next-gen yeah, consoles this, that we this have. this game is next-gen in itself. Yeah, and I'm excited to play Assassin's Creed. I'm glad they took a break because every year getting Assassin's Creed was getting a little old. And now I can drive and, back into these games and enjoy it. And no so. hate, but if we talk less of a game compared to other games, it's not because we hate that game. It's because we're running out of time. My yeah. phone, for some reason, only lets me do 15-minute videos. So. <sighs> okay. Anthem. Quick to the point. Number five. Looks like an Xbox exclusive game. Not sure if it is or not. It has a Destiny style graphics, Destiny style play style, but it looks like it's going to be so much more intense where you're like floating down in jetpacks. Oh, yeah, jet it, looked, and... it looked beautiful. I, to me, I thought it's what Destiny should have been. Like, yeah. when I, I played Destiny, loved Destiny, it was so much fun for a month. After that month, it just got so repetitive that I'm like. This this ain't fun no more. Yeah. This is like a chore. And it's a game that we didn't expect to get, that we got, that we're excited we have. Yes. So, awesome. So, for a new title, brand new title. Made in the top I'm, five, I'm sure. I'm only 100 getting it. Yeah. All right. Next up is a game I am looking so much forward to. Actually, the next two games are the ones I'm looking so much forward to. Is Days Gone. And then the next game is Evil Within. 
2. Now, oh yeah, Evil Within 2. <laughs> the, the, the remaster. Days Gone, first. even though we got more gameplay from last year, it still looks stunning. Mm, and they showed, us a new st- <laughs> they showed us a new snow area. Um, mm-hmm. They showed us this new bear zombie, zombie thing. Like, bear and it just looks it like it's going to be a fun zombie killing game. It looks like Last of Us, but Plus, a little more has like... has my favorite like, actor in, in that movie... In game the, in the game, uh, Sam Whitwer is that his name? Yeah, Whitler, the guy who plays up. Don't worry about it. Don't. Yeah, don't have Sam Whitwer. I believe that's his name. And I even have within his two, autograph and, and even so. within two, we didn't even expect to get this game. I mean, we kind of expected it soon. I was hoping to God, like as soon as E three started, I'm like, Evil Within two, Evil Within two, you better see Evil Within two. And when they finally did it, it was like, well, that was disappointing. No, I'm joking. It looks, it, it looks <laughs> stunning. It looks like it's going to be a fun sequel. They had a lot of issues with the first one, I think, with like I running out of love ammo the first one. and wrong times, and, if the, the, and there was so much more action paced. It's a survival times. horror game, but, it ha- but when you have a whole bunch of action scenes, you can't. Did really it run define... less out of ammo than Resident Evil Seven? No, but Resident Evil Seven still was more enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I loved Evil Within, but Resident Evil Within Evil 7, 2 got like, me a little bit more sold. Jesus, let there be a bullet in here. Listen, I had more element than you did in that game. All right, now moving on to the top two games, we're going to start with another Nintendo exclusive, Super Mario Odyssey. Obviously, has to be one of the best games, the entire E3. Mm-hmm. I love how they are doing everything with this game. The biggest part was for me was that they did not come out with the game and say, "And by the way, it's moved to 2018," because I was so expecting that to happen. When I saw the 2017 release date of October 27th, I was sold. I'm ready to play. I beat Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I just, beat, I just beat this game, and I'm super happy to have the Nintendo Switch. And Mario Super Mario Odyssey this coming fall is going to be so much fun to play. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play so much of that, throwing my hat at freaking dinosaurs, taking them over, and destroying things. I'm I'm, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And the number one game, me and Jeremy talked it out, looked at every single game. The and this number one, one game that we both regardless. said, Spider Man for the PS4. That game. Stunningly beautiful. The only reason Sony's conference was right. even worth watching. Plays just right, as a Spider-Man game should. I mean, it is it is exactly what I expected it to look like when we saw the little trailer we got last year, and I'm so glad they spent the last part of their whole entire conference showing the game. And I'm I was kind of disappointed we didn't get to see any like major villains to like get me excited. That I'm gonna be fighting these, you know, Rano or something. But it looks like it's going to be beautiful. It, it does. looks Miles Morales. It, it, it is basically uh, Insomniac Games' best looking game they've ever made, and mm-hmm. I love Sun. I love Sunset Overdrive. Resistance. I love Resistance. All of Insomniac wow. Games is beautiful, but this right here is the game that I'm excited for. Biggest disappointment though with it is we still got to wait till 2018 to play it. Sony really did not handle their conference well with the, the amount of games don't we don't get this year. I think that Sony did the press conference justice. But I mean, yeah, this. they did do game after game after game after game, which was cool, but yeah. I personally feel like you should announce a game, have a guy come out, talk a little bit about that game, tell him what you know is unique about this game, and then show a little bit of gameplay. And that's yeah, all it just, I really it felt asked. unpersonal, a completely... Like, yeah, instead of like a movie trailer, but Spider-Man A Day's Gone, they did excellent showing. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you all for, uh, well, thank you, Jeff, for allowing me to be on your channel. You, 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 you're welcome. Um, please go over to Batman Dragon's channel. Jacob will put a link in his thing. Description. Description. If I know how. <laughs> yeah. Um, please go over to my channel. I'll be doing more videos soon. I'll be doing a lot more video game stuff. Um, I'm hoping to get back on YouTube. I figure this is a better way to go through his channel since he's been consistently... And I have YouTube. six more people that haven't subscribed to him. Right, I need six more people. Six <laughs> more of his of his subscribers. Please join join me. I would love that. <laughs> Alright, guys. Or I'm going to let Jacob end his video. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Me. That was our top E3. The biggest disappointment as well as no Last of Us 2. But I will see you guys in the next video.